Terminal summary, 30 points. I will go through these, just a few of them. A lot of the data is gone because the Soviet Union did not want to measure. The state had organized their responsibility. They said, we're not going to measure. There are people who were sent in to clean Chernobyl, and they, they have our interview. They say, you know, I know I had this much radiation, but I saw my leader writing down a false number. So they're falsifying records to make everything look like it's not their fault. You know, you get cancer by yourself. It's not that. It's not Chernobyl. But radioactive contamination from Chernobyl spread over 40% of Europe. Nearly you know, 5 million people still live with dangerous levels of radioactive contamination. Most of Chernobyl's radionuclides, up to 57%, fell outside the country that created the problem. Same with Fukushima. Levels of radioactive contamination in the first days were thousands of times higher than recorded two or three years later. When the reactor exploded, it expelled not only gases, but particles of uranium fuel melted together with other things. When absorbed by the body, such particles generate high doses of radiation, even if the individual is in an area of low contamination. Just a few particles will kill you if it's plutonium. 2,400 tons, some authors estimate 6,700 tons of lead were dumped from helicopters on the reactor. They're a burning nuclear reactor and melted lead. So lead poisoning also was part of the, the solution, uh, which of course is a neurotoxin. In Wales, Wales is in England near Ireland, one of the regions most heavily contaminated. <laughs> a very rural area of sheep farmers. They still have abnormally low birth weights noted within that particular period. Um, children from the contaminated areas of Belarus have digestive tract epithelium characteristic of senile, you know, like they're ancient old people, their, their throats are decaying. Uh, the biological age of inhabitants from radioactive contaminated territories exceed their calendar ages by seven to nine years. Doctors look at these people and bodily, they're almost a decade older biologically. Uh, Dr. Sternglass studied infant mortality in the US and the Pacific states following Chernobyl. In May of 1986, this is one month after Chernobyl, in May of 1986, 54% increase in infant mortality in Washington state. This is the Pacific coast of the US. Suddenly, half of the children were dying then. They were being born and rise uh, 54% in infant mortality. 48% in California compared to the previous June. 245% increase of deaths per thousand live births in that month. June, 900% increase for that month of infant mortality in Massachusetts, that's of course north of New uh, York City. So this is a global. Area. In vast effects of Chernobyl radiation, we found that every group that has studied brain damage, premature cataracts, tooth and mouth abnormalities, blood problems, endocrine dysfunction, thyroid disease. Um, there are genetic damage and birth effects, especially the children of what were called the liquidators. The liquidators were the human people sent into fixing Chernobyl. They tried to send robots, but the robots were made of electronics, and there's so much radiation that the electronics broke. So robots couldn't work. The robots would work 20, you know, 20 minutes and then not work. So they had to send people to pick up pieces of the reactor and throw it back in. How do you organize something like this when death awaits you if you spend five minutes in contact with that? So they not only had work schedules of 30, 30 seconds. They could run out there for 30 seconds, pick something up and throw it off and go back. There were maybe half a million people went into Chernobyl to fix this thing. And it's still a never-ending nightmare because it's still radioactive. It's, the, the forest is still radioactive. You can still die after several days in one of the forests around the area just by sitting there. Um, anyway, skipping all this, incidence of disease of blood, this much higher among the vacuities, even nine years after the 
That's true. So we could go on, but you get the picture. You get the picture. Um, so cow's milk, as I said, is a good indicator of radiation. Um, recently, Japan suffered the earthquake and the tsunami and the nuclear meltdowns. Um, experts advise the Japanese don't panic. You know. um, they advise that food was safe to eat and radiation and not near their food supply. But the past week, the world learned Japanese food and water were tainted with radioactive iodine, and food is now routinely tested in Japan. Uh, cows milk, since cows are eating that much feed even today, and radiation is concentrated in their bodies like sponges soaking up water. Uh, anyway, 21 pounds of milk concentrate one pound of butter. So much more concentrated eating butter would further concentrate those toxins. In this case, radioactivity. Um, the United States doesn't want to know. It doesn't want to do any additional testing right now. As of uh, a few, two weeks, about a week and a half after March 11th, California milk is not being tested for radiation on a daily basis. Um, California's Department of Public Health routinely tests California milk only once a month. Um, anyway, let's move on. So, a lot of people say, well, don't worry, this is Korea. We have a different technology. This is France. France is a different technology. You know, there have been disasters everywhere. Uh, even South Korea admits there have been 90 accidents in nuclear power reactors in the past 10, 10 years, all successfully shut down, never leading to criticality. But now one of these nuclear reactors in South Korea is 20% of all things, of all the accidents. And maybe they will shut that one down. Um, but in Fukushima, here's organized irresponsibility. Uh, General Electric Design, called Mark I, was cheap to build. That's why General Electric liked to build it. Um, it needed less concrete. One of the people designing it, he quit the design team because he says, this is going to be very risky. So they just fired him. He's been in the media recently talking about all this. So this is uh, an issue. There's Three Mile Island. This was the United States' worst disaster in 1979. People still have higher levels of cancer up wind from all that. Um, so lung cancer, leukemia rates increase two to ten times in areas within ten miles downwind. And it's still a problem. You have permanent weird life forms. Leaves that are too big, leaves that are too small, leaves that don't fit, some insects are, are too big. A lot more deformed animals in the region. And that's all I want to talk about with the deck today. Next time we'll continue social construction of risk in the 1980s. Beck is writing in the later 1980s, right in the middle of uh, environmental movements and in the middle of the concern with social construction of risk. So Beck puts a lot of this together and argues that we need new institutions to handle these risks. But he's very optimistic that we could develop them if we want. And he has lots of suggestions in his book. I'm sure you can find some translations in Korean if you're interested in Beck. Beck's a very funny writer for a very dark 